Hey beautifuls, Hannah from Reality Awareness here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Live psychic readings coming to you now, but you have to be live to receive a psychic reading. That they are the rules when I do a psychic readings live online. So my hair's, I thought my hair was fine, and then I was like, get on live stream, and I'm like, ah, I should have done my hair. Why does that always happen, right? Like, get on live stream, and then, like, it's fine, it's fine, and then I'm like, oh, maybe. This is the doubt. You know how I always talk about trusting your intuition, funnily enough? And then when we make a decision, doubt always comes up. So it's like, yes, it's fine, it's all good. And then it's like, oh, maybe I should have. No, 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 don't doubt yourself. Just keep walking through that. Hey, Christina, say hi when you join live, guys. I feel like I haven't been live for ages. Well, I haven't really, because I've been on the road and I did that live stream the other day about midnight which went for like ever. <laughs> Not sure if you guys watched it. I was like, hey Glenn. And um, when it seemed like it went forever. I kind of did actually. All right, let's have a look here. So I'm just gonna share this as always. Hey Rosina, hey Richard, Deborah, Kelly. Hello, 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 hello few new people here I think I think okay let me have a look here and share this definitely don't want to hear my own voice on the live stream again because I'm already hearing myself <laughs> so whilst I'm sharing this hey Haley hey Kristen and Jenny so while I'm sharing this, I kind of want to just have a check in with you guys and see where you're at. Okay, cool. It's letting me share it. Um, about the energies, like how are you guys coping with the energies right now? I'm really curious if you guys are feeling really expansive and amazing or whether you're like bawling your eyes out and questioning everything. I'd be so curious about that of where you're at. Um, I know there's been a lot of people that have just been like kind of feeling quite upset. I know I have in myself. There's lots of big changes going on. Um, and like, just like, it feels like, you know, for like we're birthing, right? We're like birthing. It's like, eh, but it's like going to push open and expand very soon is definitely what I feel. And I feel like that September, October is going to be like a full, it's almost like a big, big shift in energy. Like something's just going to like topple over. <laughs> like it's not going to break or anything, but it's literally just going to I don't know, how do we say that? Topple over? And it's maybe, maybe the energy's gonna like start moving forward again or something. I don't know, I don't know what that, that sense is there. Hey Margie. So Christina, hey Kylie. So Christina says she feels stuck. Alison says a roller coaster. Brittany's asking how I am. <laughs> um, and Deborah is sad today. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I just wanted to check in because I feel like there's a I don't know, there's been a bit of strong energies around, that's for sure. Um, I haven't even looked what astrological stuff is going on, um, but there's definitely, definitely stuff going on. So, Christine, or Kristen says, yes, I went through the heavy energy about a week ago. Now I'm feeling light and fulfilled, going through a big soul shift. Yeah, big, big soul awakenings going on, and I feel like... Well, actually, we are coming up to the Lionsgate portal. So that's like on the 8th of August, so the 8th of the 8th. Um, and that's like, you know, like that's always a big awakening time. So I remember in August 2018 was when we had like the eclipses on the Lionsgate as well, whereas we've just had the eclipse season. But just like I shared the other day, and Pam Gregory had said in her um, astrological forecast for the new moon, is that these intense energy is going to hang around for the next six months, yeah? So, yes, how am I? <laughs> Richard says mood is unstable. Yes, Robin says, how are you? So everyone's asking how I am. <laughs> so Madonna is upside down today. Yeah, so Richard says, questioning why I can't stop past bad habits. I did before, but not now. Okay, so it's like they've amplified or something, right? Okay, so I want to speak to that. Um, so Kelly says, feeling a little lost, yeah. So these... Um, so a couple of things. So just speak to that first. So when you say, Richard, questioning why I can't stop past bad habits, I did before, but not now. I'm just going to move that. The sun's starting to, to come in. <laughs> um, 
so the okay so I feel so like past bad habits addictions anything like that we can be like yeah it's all good yeah I stopped you know and stopped all that and whatever right and then as you say it's like um, questioning why I can't stop them I did before but not now and sometimes when we like go along and we're like we stop we can be okay so like I say any addiction okay is the surface stuff okay I always say don't worry about trying to stop the addiction because it's the stuff underneath that you're really needing to deal with because if you just stop this addiction and you haven't dealt with the core of why you're doing the addiction in the first place right it's like keeping it down in a way if you try and stop this that's why a lot of people will you know like go back because this is sitting there and the, what an addiction does is it just stops you it, it's a mask it masks the pain of all this that you're feeling like it stops you feeling the pain in a way right and it could be alcohol drugs it could be food it could be uh, sex it could be like any any addiction like anything can become addiction spirituality can become an addiction like do you know what I mean like working too much can become an addiction and so if we don't deal with what's going on underneath then if we remove that we're probably gonna go back a million times because we haven't dealt with this so I always say, don't worry and feel about, or feel about, <laughs> don't think about trying to release the addiction. Focus on all this stuff that you're using the addiction to cover up. Because when you deal with this, the addiction doesn't, it, it naturally falls away because you don't have to suppress all the pain. Does that make sense? And so, you might be like, oh, but I did work on that, Hannah, and I did, you know, I did do that, and that's why I stopped, and I had been working on myself, and I, you know, I've done a lot of work, and blah, 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 and now it's come back, and now I can't do it. And so what that is, is like a deeper layer, right? It's like kind of layers like an onion, you know? It's like layers upon layers upon layers, especially when your addiction comes back after so long, and you've been so good, and you're like, ah, oh, what's going on, right? It's like there's just a deeper layer surfacing, yeah? And that's when I'd be looking at getting help and support um, to be able to help you work through that stuff, especially if it's surfacing again like that. Um, I was just gonna say something else then, I can't remember what it is. Um, yeah, tired, oh, the tiredness. I thought I was just tired this week, so like, what are we now, Friday, Australian time. So especially like, yeah, Monday, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe a little bit yesterday, not so much, but definitely Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Australian time, I was like floored with tiredness. Now, I just thought that all my driving and all the weeks had caught up on me, right? But then I was speaking to so many people and they're like, I'm so tired. And I was like, extremely tired today. And I'm like, oh, maybe there's something going on. So yeah, I feel like there's, you know, something there, definitely. Um, so Robin says, I feel I've needed physical healing this week and the emotion stuckness was there, yes. When I asked why I was feeling stuck and low, it was not my own and so I spent time to clear it. Yeah, we can get tired and drained and stuff because we are carrying other people's energies. Um, definitely, yeah. So I feel confused, lost and worried. And that's why I always say guys, like, you know, like the first thing you need to go through is like, okay, have I cleared my energy? Am I taking care of myself? Like, it's the number one thing. Like if you're not doing that to start with, like, Ugh, like that's the first thing you need to check into, right? Because if we're clearing all this, doing all this deeper work and it's like, it's not even your stuff to clear, right? So number one, clear your energy, keep your self care up, then you can check in if it's something else, right? If it's still there, then it might be yours to deal with, right? Is what I'm saying. So Tonya says, I feel confused, lost and worried. My kitty has a mass on her intestines and needs a surgery. Ah, yeah, that's really huge. That's really big too. And when, whenever we have a surgery or anything comes in about surgery at all, um, surgery either with our animals or with us, it's that we're ready to deal with the physical, like the physical thing needs to be removed and it, and it shows up because we're ready to deal with it. So even though it's like medical surgery and all this sort of thing, it might be like, oh, well, I need to do spiritual work. It's like, well, sometimes we need to get the physical surgery done to remove the thing to then look at doing you know the spiritual work because like they both work hand in hand especially for those big lumps or whatever right 
Um, and so usually we're like ready to deal with that. But yeah, feeling confused, lost and worried, the first thing you wanna do is clear your energy. So I trust and hope that you're doing that as well. Okay, yes, let's get to these readings, hey? Okay, so Richard says not addiction, but more family paranoia problems. I wonder, I'm pretty sure I've got my book just here, wait on. Yay, I do. <laughs> because this paranoia thing, I'm gonna to speak to that, right? Because paranoia, I remember speaking with para, with para, I, speak, I was speaking with paranoia. <laughs> I was speaking with paranoia. Um, no, I was looked at paranoia with a client um, a little while ago, and I was like, oh, that's so interesting. I don't know why I haven't looked at that before. <laughs> so anyway, paranoia, I'm sure I would have, but it was, anyway. So paranoia is fear, mistrust, obsession, and blame. Suspicion that someone or something intends to hurt you, feeling out of control, carrying secrets that are eating you thinking that something bad is going to happen. Now, all of those, right? So when it's like carrying secrets that are eating you, thinking that something bad is going to happen. Richard, can you please confirm, clarify, is it you with the paranoia or people in your family with the paranoia? If you can just let me know that. Hey Lee, yes, perfect timing. Yes, onion layers are really surfacing. Yeah, and I saw something, so whatever planetary lineup is going on, I did see something that the next six months is about all these wounds coming to the surface or something. And so it feels very much like anything that you haven't dealt with or the deep buried stuff, right? So we're like, yeah, it's fine, everything's good, but it's like the real deep core is shifting. Now, what I really, Oh, I'm covered in goosebumps as I said that. Truth bumps. <laughs> what I really feel, still covered in goosebumps, it's really strong, right? Because what I really feel that is, is definitely in, you know, like this like global awakening and everything that we're going through. Like this is definitely like shifting. Oh, like don't know how to describe it. Like, okay, so lots of people who are not conscious on the planet are awakening, right? Would you guys agree? Give me some love hearts and comment yes if you agree, right? So with all this world stuff and the COVID and all the shit that's going on, people who have been asleep are waking up. They're having spiritual awakenings, they're feeling lost and confused, they're doing all this stuff, right? Like they're waking up, yeah? And because of that, right, because those unconscious people are now waking up and becoming conscious, right? Going through spiritual awakenings, right? Because they are waking up. People like us who have been awake for quite some time or a little while or a couple of years or longer, right? People like us who have been awake a longer, conscious, had our spiritual awakenings ages ago, right? This is normal. What are you talking about? Like, of course, this is, you guys get it. People like us are healing deeper, deeper buried stuff. So we might have done a lot of work, right? But there is work, I'm really important to point this out, guys, you probably already know. There is work at every level. There is always layers of the onion. There is always things to work on and stuff. If anyone's like, I'm fully healed, I don't need to do any more work, you wanna stay away from those people, okay? <laughs> yeah, um, anyway, <laughs> those, you know, like, there's always work to do at every level, right? So there's a huge awakening on the planet right now and those unconscious people are waking up and people like us who have been awake for a long time, the real deep, deep buried stuff in the subconscious like that we thought was like really done. Like we didn't even know there was like this deeper part like down there, like we didn't know it went that deep. Like that's the shit that's surfacing and we're like, ah. <laughs> right? I know that <laughs> of like, going out off grid and like going like I, I remember i kept saying to you guys i'm like in another realm like i'm in the fairy realm which is like deep in the subconscious like it was intense right but this is what's going on on the planet right now is that people like us is like the deepest stuff is surfacing right so i feel um i don't know how did i get onto that onion layers i don't know whatever obviously needed to say it <laughs> 
Okay, so Deborah says, I've tried so many times to give up addictions. It takes time. They don't just stop it each time. It gets easier. Yes. Yeah, it's a process. Yep. Definitely a process. So Richard says he was extremely tired these last few days too. Yeah, it was a big wave. It was a big wave. Yeah, and a lot of people that I know had felt that, right? Um, so Donna Murder, hey, hi. Same here, been exhausted this week, especially the start of the week. Yeah, yeah, a lot of us felt it, right? Yeah. Yes, all right, I'll share a little bit how I'm doing because everyone's like, how are you? And I'm like, yeah, I haven't really shared anything. <laughs> Um, I'm so, okay, Katrina says I'm so up and down, the slightest thing destroys my positive headspace. I go from optimistic and positive to doom and gloom in two seconds. Yeah, lots of up and down, isn't there? Lots of up and down. Hi, Amber. Yeah, this book's brilliant. <laughs> it's really good. Ah, oh, hugs, Rebecca. Robin says, can totally relate and it doesn't make sense given how awesome you are. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, so the up and down stuff, I'll speak to that as well. Definitely layers, yes. Yes, Robin says I'm being called to face some of my shit to heal it too. Yes, definitely. Yep. Such a huge shift. Yes, yes, everyone's agreeing. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So Robin says I sense our healing, our deeper stuff is part of healing the collective 100%. I feel people like us... Well, I know that sounds really egotistical and like, you know, but I'm like, it's a thing. <laughs> well, it's a thing for everyone ultimately. And then when we're conscious of it and aware of it, it's even like stronger, right? That when we heal, we're healing the collective. It's a reflection. It's just the way it is. And he says, oh, fuck yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Rebecca says, I feel like my insides are being ripped apart. And my heart is heavy. It's weird. I don't know how to deal with it. It's so interesting, right? So Rebecca says her insides feel like they're being ripped apart and my heart is heavy. When you say your insides are being ripped apart, do you mean like your gut? Like you literally your gut, is that what you mean? Like down in your gut, like in your sacral, do you mean? Tara says very true. Yes, Tanya says thank you. Yes, I've been working on chakras, peeling back the onion layers, healing and waking up. Yes, yes, awesome. She'll have surgery, awesome. See, he, she. Hey, Sandy. So lovely to have you here, Sandy. Jenny says, I literally woke up at 1 a.m. and my phone immediately notifies me. Yes. So I woke up in both ways for this live. Very cool to be on this live with you. So awesome. I love that so much. Um, I was going to say, yeah, woke up in both ways. Like, obviously, yeah, I'm really meant to be here. That's awesome. Tired this week. Yes. Have been feeling tired and dizzy and not particularly hungry. Yes. Big shifts, like energetic shifts. We're going through that. So Deborah says, I haven't felt it been to the gym four days this week and doing two classes every day. I love that so much. So amazing how some of us are on like certain webs. Like I always, that fascinates me. So Richard says, now I think about it. I think I'm still carrying my dad's energy. I've done a few meditations and one of the images that came to me was there and two huge energetic cords attached to my crown. There's actually been a lot of crown chakra cord stuff um yes around this is this yeah yep big crown stuff around that's interesting yeah archangel michael cut the cords i'm not sure why i'm feeling like especially when i was clear for a week yeah very lucky to have you in my corner oh thanks <laughs> okay so yeah that paranoia stuff suspicion that something or someone intends to hurt you feeling out of control carrying secrets that are eating you thinking something bad's gonna happen paranoia like can you know, like fear, mistrust, obsession, blame. Um, so when I just said then about the crown chakra and a lot of crown stuff and cords and everything like that, there's a lot of um, attachments. That's what I'm trying to get at. So the cords, crown chakra, obsession, attachments. Um, I feel like a lot of attachments are being cut, broken. Um, people are waking up to the reality. So a lot of third eye stuff going on for people as well. Like I feel like the top two chakras, there's a lot shifting. So a lot of brains, so there might be headaches or just like foggy head or like, like can't figure it out, like confusion, you know, like a lot of head stuff, a lot of attachments, a lot of like, uh, like cords and uh, it's almost like a helmet on top. It's kind of weird, like a helmet on top with like all these like cords. I don't know how to describe it any other way than that. Um, you know, and it's like, and I don't quite know what that is, right? Um, but I feel like there's been a lot of snap, wake up, rubber band, stretching, breaking, like, you know what I mean? Like that sort of a 
snap reality wake up stuff is like in people's faces at the moment and then if they don't do anything about it it's kind of like they just go unconscious again so it's almost like and this is interesting right so the up and the down energies is like you know it's kind of like a waking up or you know you know it makes me wonder then if we're already awake but then there's a lot of these up and down motions and energy like people are waking up they have realizations and if they don't take action on the thoughts and the messages of the realizations that they're having then they simply go unconscious again you know and it's almost like but then it'll snap it's almost and, and that feels like covered in goosebumps truth bumps as i say this that feels like the energies for the next six months like this covered in goosebumps still they haven't gone away <laughs> message <laughs> downloaded <laughs> are you listening <laughs> um that feels like the energies of the next six months up and down roller coaster like whoa. so the best thing that you can do is enable yourself like the deeper self-care the the I, I personally feel that the fastest way to stabilization is to acting on your intuition so not just receiving it having realizations but sometimes we have realizations and stuff and we just simply don't know what to do with it right um so yeah and so that's where i feel like i come in at reality awareness helping you guys have that clarity right all right so dana murder says i placed some crystals on me twice this week that i used in the full moon ceremony <laughs> that full moon ceremony energy that was so powerful um my four-year-old came in and both times she placed more crystals on me yeah nice love that crystal healing so Christina says, I have adrenal fatigue. How do I clear that? Always tired and don't have energy. Also headache on the right side of my head. Yeah, there's lots there with the adrenal fatigue. Like there's so much physical stuff. There's so much like, um, you know, emotional stuff of like, what are you carrying? Is it yours? You know, like whose is it? You know, what, you know, any tiredness too, by the way, is like, especially if it's not like a collective wave of tiredness, like, you know, adrenal fatigue or, um, what's the other one like fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia and stuff like I personally feel is like if you're not listening to intuition you get tighter and tighter and tighter you know and I always talk about this because if you're not acting on your intuition we can hear it we can listen to it but we need to act on it and if we're not acting on it that intuition backs up and backs up and backs up and then it's like you know what I mean so so yeah so there's lots there with adrenal fatigue um it's not just like yes let's do a clearing it's kind of like there could be a lifetime's worth of stuff sitting in there so yeah but adrenals are very much connected to the kidneys and kidneys are very much connected to fear so like what are you fearful of you know like what are you sitting in the energetic environment of a fearful energy but that becomes your norm and then it's kind of like that it's like constant like yeah burnout sort of thing yeah there's so much i could talk about that Karen says, yeah, been feeling it. It's now or never. Okay, this is the other thing I just want to share and then I'm going to start getting into the reading. So all this week, look at this. <laughs> this is the bottom card of the deck. Transparency, um, honest, authentic, genuine and present. <laughs> so being completely honest and authentic with your intuition. Yeah, really tuning into that. Um, okay, so this, this is what I wanted to share because I did like, I've done lots of client calls this week. So I know I've been quiet on live stream, but I've been busy. <laughs> um, so i like saying full schedule not busy because busy is like an year but full schedule yeah i'm full um so it was like i was like man this is like the third client i've like said this to today but it sounds like what's going on for you as well and so it's like okay you're standing there right so when you say karen no no not you siri karen when you say yep yeah, it's been been feeling it it's a now or ne ne never now or never energy so you're standing there and say if you're like say if you're standing in front of me and you're like looking out to the out to the the yacht <laughs> for example and it's like there's like a river coming behind you like a, a river of water yeah a fast flowing rapid river or maybe it's a nice gentle one but it's crystal clear water and this water is like coming behind you and it doesn't like hit you and bowl you over it literally kind of hits you but then it splits in two and one part of the river goes over this way and another part of the river flows that way. And so it's basically splitting, right? And now there's two, there's two rivers. There's one going this way, there's one going this way. And I feel like the energies right now, and I actually personally feel this as I tune into it, I feel 
Covered in goosebumps again and getting all the messages for you guys. Obviously needed to do an energy update before we did the psychic readings. <laughs> um, this, these, I feel like these energies of like the two rivers splitting and which one are you going to take? Which one are you going to step into? And that's like your life direction. So actually, I feel like, so let me finish. So that's, I feel like that's going to hang around until Lionsgate energy, which is the 8th of the 8th, I'm pretty sure. Um, and on that 8th of the 8th, like, like after then, it's kind of like that's solidified. Now, of course, nothing's set in stone and we can always change the future because we can change our actions. But energetically, I feel like that's a thing. Now, if we think back to maybe it was two or three full moons ago. No, it was like on the first eclipse, wasn't it? So that full moon, so it would have been two full moons ago, I think. I'm going to have to have a look. Um, it was very much around like whatever. I think it was actually, it wasn't, it was, a, it was an astrological thing um, on the first eclipse. I have a feeling, so what are we, July, June, 5th of June? Was it May? I don't remember. Anyway, I remember it distinctly being like the decisions you make today are going to affect the next 18 months. And so I feel like it's been, you know, from what was it, two full moons ago, let's say, from that energy and that like decisive, like planetary lineup, whatever decisions you made on that day, like the decisions I made on that day was actually when I booked this place and the super yard and like being here, right? Like that was like solidified that day and like now I'm here, right? And now it's like ever since then, that's two full moons ago, it's like that river is uh, say getting stronger. Maybe it's becoming more conscious in your awareness. And as Karen said, it's like, yep, yeah, it's now or never energy. It's like, yeah, got to do it now or, you know, never basically, as you say, right? And it's like this whole, like, yeah, this, I feel like it's just kind of going to get stronger. It's almost like it's pushing you. It's like, okay, which way do you want to go now, right? And it's like, you know, this way or this way. So if you just, if you actually tune in for yourself, you'll probably feel like, you know, is there, is there two major decisions going on? Or is there, are you in a place where you're like, I actually have no freaking idea which decision I'm going to make or which direction I'm going to go. Like, you know, like, help me. Like, what do I do? Like, maybe, maybe like that river analogy and the water flow analogy is there, but it's also not conscious about where you can go or which option you can take. Like, do you know what I mean? Even though there's options, but it's like, okay, is it going to show up yet? <laughs> you know? So I feel like that. Um, so yeah, so just keep that in mind, right? So whatever was going on two full moons ago, you might want to, you know, just kind of go on a calendar and have a look. I can't remember the date off the top of my head. And just, you know, remember what was happening in your life back then, two full moons ago. And then, um, you know, by the, the uh, Lion's Gate on the 8th of the 8th, um, I feel, like I said, I feel like these next two weeks, roughly, um, two to three weeks, is going to be like, more pushy and pushy and pushy not in a harsh way just in a like okay as karen said it's like that now or never energy it's like okay kind of like got to get it done like okay on like do you know what i mean but we might be like eh, i don't know <laughs> and it's kind of like we're on the edge of this distinctive like split river but we kind of don't know which way that's going or but we know we need to take a decision a choice <laughs> all right so richard says what do you recommend okay um what was that question for? <laughs> if you can please remind me. Okay, Kelly says, yay, I felt a live video as I eat. Yes, awesome. Hi, Kelly. <laughs> Sounds like me at the moment. Yes, yeah, got a tingling just now. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, Mel. It was so lovely to connect with you. So Karen says, definitely getting directed to stop second guessing myself and follow my life purpose. Yeah, and I really want to point out, guys, I can, it's so funny when I first got on this live stream, it's like, okay, my hair's fine, that's fine, press live. And then I'm like, oh, maybe I should have fixed up my hair after I've pressed live, right? <laughs> and then it's like, but I already made the decision, so it's fine, so just keep going. Again, this is exactly what I teach in Trust Intuition. When we make a decision, doubt always comes up. Doubt always comes up. We're always like, we're like, yes, this way. And we're like, oh, I don't know, maybe I should know, right? But it's, it's a thing, right? We keep going. Um, and I feel like the energies now are also with everything I just shared, but also very pertinent on 
um, it, like manifestation is at like super, super high levels, you know, and if you can really think when I said, you know, like people like us are clearing out like the deepest wounds that we didn't even know that was still stuck down there and like, like well, there's stuff there, like how does it even go that deep? Like what's the stuff that's surfacing, right? And because we're clearing out that level, like that's a big weight all the way down there that's now clearing out and what happens, our vibration gets lighter and so we manifest more rapidly. So it's also instant manifestation and higher frequency energies that we are moving into, right? As the collective is awakening and so like, you know, if there's webs of different layers, so to speak, um, there's definitely, you know, higher frequencies that we're tapping into, therefore higher instant manifestation rates. So stop second guessing yourself because that doubt and turmoil was like an anchor, but it's also like spinning off all this doubt into your current reality. And we don't want that there, do we? <laughs> Lee says, definitely feeling the push. Yes. Hey, Aaron. So spot on, on point. Yes. All these moons and planet alignment. I know. So full on, right? 2020. Oh gosh, this has gone down in history books. <laughs> yeah. I recommended a couple of things. Okay, awesome. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Mary. Okay, obviously I needed to do that energy update first, guys. So let's have a look. Okay, so yes, please, Hannah, I would love a reading. I bought a large sacral crystal today for that healing. Ah, so special. Yeah, lots of sacral chakra stuff going on too. Um, I noticed for a lot of people as well because sacral chakra you know as i always say like if you teach in light field yoga like we place our hands on our sacral and in the third eye it's like this it's like a, a mirror our brain our brain and our gut like our intestines they look the same right like you know they look the same so yeah they're very very connected very very connected all right let's have a look here all right so who is this reading for so if you'd like to comment, yes, please. I would love a card. So I've got a fresh line there. And if I don't get to read you specifically, please um, listen intently because there will be messages for you at some point. You'd be like, yep, oh, that's the message I needed to hear today. Okay. All right. Okay, Renea. Renea I'm being drawn to to start with and the first thing that I pulled out and I'm covered in goosebumps as I read this so the first one is this one how to talk about the full moon this beautiful full moon visions images oh, no it doesn't say visions oh it says visions it says psychic images clairvoyance seeing out of body travel now the first thing that came to mind for you, Renea, I think I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, so when I first saw this card for you, Renea, where is your name? I just need to locate, locate it. <laughs> is, okay, so just like I'd said before around think back to two full moons ago, I'm pretty sure it was two full moons ago. Yeah, it was. Oh, I'm pretty sure. Maybe it was three. I'm going to have to check that. Um, this, I feel, is especially tapped into what I'm talking about. Like, or like for you. like, and, and for everyone, of course. But I feel like that's really strong for you, Renea. So, like, the issues or whatever was happening. So, two to three full moons ago. I want to check them both in your, like, memory bank there is really pertinent now these other two cards wanted to come out right now the selkie and her skin this is such a beautiful um story with the selkie and her skin very much around like what's reclaiming your authenticity and the actual story is like based oh, i don't know if it's off scotland or somewhere like that in the freezing cold <laughs> um is that a, a a man had captured her or she'd fallen in love i think he'd captured her or something and then like she stayed on land she was a mermaid she stayed on land um you know and became you know her his wife she didn't want to she was kept against her will um i don't know if her tail had changed or something like that but something like some of her magic or something was taken away and then 
um, you know, one day when he'd gone out fishing, he, she like released the cuffs or however she was chained up and actually like released herself back in the ocean. And then she came back with her sons or her family or something and killed him or something like it's pretty full on, but it was all about reclaiming your authenticity, like the selkie in her skin, like reclaiming her skin back because he'd kind of stripped her bare in a way. And I feel like whatever was going on for you back then, it's like now you are reclaiming your authenticity in goosebumps you're reclaiming your authenticity right but this one here that's underneath it the return of aphrodite this is like you really so like here you're kind of like reclaiming yourself and i feel like for you know especially the next like month to six weeks for you renea it's kind of like remembering who you are because i feel like whatever ended up happening originally on you know that full moon is like all these it's almost like it was the turning point for you going, you know what? Like, no, I'm gonna reclaim my gifts and trust my intuition and my psychic gifts and all of that sort of stuff. And then, you know, like this next, and what it has been, and then these next months or six weeks is you like remembering all these things about yourself and like everything that you're wanting to, you know, reclaim, right? Reclaiming your authenticity. And it's interesting, remember that first card that was on the bottom card of the deck, which was, you know, kind of for the collective wherever it is oh no i just dropped them all not all of them the honesty the transparency right is the honest authentic genuine and present and this reclaiming your authenticity is kind of like you're like i'm done hiding i'm done not speaking my truth i'm done not you know standing up for myself i'm done like i'm done i'm done i'm done and this is like reclaiming your skin like all these little pieces that you've left in all, all the timelines of your entire life is like you know what i'm gonna pull all that in and then reclaim my power and then i'm rising into the goddess that i am to be able to do what i really need to do in the world even if you're not clear on what that is but right now i feel like it's such a reclaiming space for you right it's like okay and this and this and i just feel like you're having realization after realization after realization after realization after like you know what not tolerating that anymore you know what that's not okay you know what like it's like one after the other after the other right yeah okay so that's for you renea i'm not sure if um it makes any sense at all okay Beautiful cards, yeah, they sure are. Hi, Danielle, nice to meet you, thank you. So relevant, yeah, so me right now, right? Yeah, so they said, you know, all these messages in it, if you just listen. I was picking up these cards because I just dropped them everywhere. All right, so next person, um, very accurate, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Oof, covered in goosebumps. Okay. All right, tuning in to the next person, getting covered in goosebumps. All right, so I'm gonna just scroll back through. I know some of you are commenting again, but I'm also scrolling back through the list because it's still, still recent. All right, so Christina, so Christina is at Batshon Daheb. I don't know how to pronounce your full name. I'm sorry about that. So is Christina still here? I want to check if Christina's still here before I actually read for her. All right, so don't know if Christina's still here or not. Yes, okay, awesome. And yes, she's still here, yes, that's correct. Okay, I pronounced it correctly. Lucky for that. <laughs> All right, so this is interesting. And I know that you were asking before about the adrenal fatigue. So this card has come up, balance career and home life. Can you please let me know what you do or like, you know, do you have a career or are you, are you um a stay-at-home mom or sort of thing i don't really know that much about you um even though a stay-at-home mom is a full-time career as well I really want to point that out um thanks danielle so this balanced career and home life obviously this is isis as well so lots of egyptian energy 
Oof. Okay, and I feel like this for you, Christina. So you know how we talk about the adrenal stuff before and then, um, and what's coming to mind is actually something that I shared with a client this week, um, is that, okay, so the adrenal fatigue and the tiredness and stuff, like adrenal fatigue. Okay, stay at home mom of two kids, 10 and 12. Okay, awesome. So balanced career and home life, the adrenal fatigue is, I'm curious where your self care is at, what you um, do for yourself. Oh, your husband is Egyptian. <laughs> of course, <laughs> love that so much. Um, what do you do for yourself? So I imagine that you're really awesome at your job, being a beautiful mum and keeping the family on point and the house on point and all that sort of thing as we do and that is a freaking full-time job. That's why we hire other people to do it for us. <laughs> um, now this, right, is, okay, so I'm just gonna speak, can I just speak? Okay, so I'm curious what you do for yourself, right? You, I'm sure you run around and you're beautiful at caring for everyone else. What do you do for you? What, what do you do for you in a day? So say if like, eight hours in a day, you're running around and doing household stuff and family stuff and all of that. So what about you, right? Do you get massages? Do you do exercise? Do you go to the gym? Do you do, like, what do you do for you? Or are you just constantly doing the house stuff and doing family stuff? Like, you know, like, I'm curious about that. If you can just let me know if you do anything for yourself or whether you're just like, actually, no, I don't do anything for myself. And there's nothing wrong with that. But this is where the fatigue is coming in if that's um, what's going on there as a start. Um, now, the thing that I shared with a client this week is that we can be really good at looking after the house and being able to, you know, run around and care for everyone else and we forget about ourselves. It's not that we forget about ourselves, but energetically, we are like holding it together for everyone else. And so like we, it, what happens when we hold it together for everyone else is we create this um, almost like casing on the outside. So the way I describe it to my client the other day is, um, you know, like a, a capsule that you take with herbs or whatever in it and it's got a clear capsule around it. That's what happens to like us, like this capsule, you know, a capsule around like our energy field. So our energy field is like a bubble and this capsule like solidifies on the outside of our, um, our aura, right? Now what happens when that happens is that it, it can't, it doesn't let anything in. It doesn't, it doesn't let anything in, it blocks everything coming in and out. That becomes like dry and brittle and cracked, right? If you can imagine something going hard, well, it's eventually gonna dry out and then there's no energy flow because it's cracked, right? It's like, well, it might be cracked, but it's like, it's hard and brittle rather than soft and flowing and beautiful energy flow, which it should be. Um, so when, when that is there, not only does it not let anything in or out, but the inside gets depleted and there's, it doesn't, it can't fill up. Like, do you know what I mean? Like there's nothing there. Um, so Christina says, I haven't taken care of myself in so long. Okay. <laughs> I try to walk, but stopped going to the gym because of COVID. Okay. All right. So there's things you can do at home for the gym. Yeah. Um, definitely as well and um, like that is like the number one thing and it's interesting right because the balanced career and home life is kind of like you know all good for you know even though if you don't have a specific career as such but the home life it's out of balance right and you could look at the career as yourself yeah because um, that is where it starts and um, this career like there needs to be more balance there. So start putting yourself first on a daily basis and watch your energy slowly start to come back. So like I said with the adrenal fatigue before, it's not just an overnight quick fix pill that's gonna do one meditation and it's done. Like especially with adrenal fatigue, like the body is worn out. So it takes time to repair and heal. Plus we've got to like look at what's other things going on with the spiritual aspects and blah, 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 right? 
Um, so Katrina says, I feel guilty when I do anything for me. Okay, yes. And so that's then looking at where's that guilt coming from, you know, and working through that guilt as well, because guilt can be the driver for people pleasing. Um, so when we're in like, when we do have that level of guilt on board, what happens is that the guilt drives us and then we kind of like say yes automatically and we do things for other people and then we're you know, like then we burn out, then we get resentful, and then we're like, I'm not doing anything, and then we kind of repeat the cycle, and that's freaking exhausting, right? Um, so with the guilt, like being able to look at like where the guilt is um, coming from in being able to do something for you is, is like the people pleaser role underneath that, okay? And underneath that is a little boy or girl inside of you. Let's see if you're a girl, or you're a woman, it's a girl, it's a boy, it's a boy, <laughs> in a way. Um, nothing set in stone, of course. Um, so underneath is this little girl or boy inside of you that only knows how to receive love by doing things for other people. Now that can stem in from like childhood, um, you're so welcome Christina, from doing like childhood um, uh, traits and like given too much responsibility as a child and then you're not able to, you know, like learn how to receive or anything like that. Like, you know, it's like we're that's the only way you know like do this and then i'll love you you know like it's a um it's conditional okay and so we're taught that conditional love is the only way we're worthy of receiving love which is a big undoing and unpatterning but there's definitely layers underneath the guilt that we need to clear out so we like the addiction right it's like all you know and then there's this thing sitting there but within the thing there's layers within the thing and that's where yeah i'm so glad you're interested in tuition richard because yeah that's where we heal those layers to the core all right, let me just turn the lights on and then I'll be back. All right. You're so welcome. Okay. Okay, who's next? So Katrina says, yes, I understand, no validation as a child, nothing was ever enough to be given approval, yes. Oh, covered in goosebumps. And that is why it is like such a strong thing and I always harp on about doing inner child work and we gotta do inner child work and inner child work and why do I always harp on about it? Because everything stems from freaking childhood. <laughs> heal the inner child and heal the world, I say. Like really, like it's a thing, like it is. And, and, and the benefits of doing working with our inner child is that our life purpose lives within our inner child and our intuition lives within our intu in intuition lives within our inner child our wisdom lives within our inner within our inner child inner child healing has so many benefits you want to know what your life purpose is heal all your childhood shit and work with the inner child it's a thing like literally on my website if you go to realityawareness.com and scroll down the page, you'll see the audio meditations. And in the audio meditation page, somewhere in there, in that page, is the inner child meditation. I think it's like $15, which is just ridiculous. But in there is also five training videos that can help you to work with the inner child and what happens if they're not there and what happens if this happens and this happens and this happens, right? So if you can't book in with me or choose not to book in with me, you can do it yourself. And this is what I'm passionate about, about helping people to be able to heal because I'm passionate about teaching you how to heal and teaching you how to like heal the layers and heal the layers and heal the layers because there's always layers like I was saying before there is stuff at every level there is always stuff right and when we can have the tools to be able to heal the stuff at every layer then we're able to fly right we're not relying and waiting on someone and waiting for the healer to fix us like nobody can fix you only you can fix yourself right love that meditation yes it's powerful right it is right email okay hang on a second so okay so richard says i'm taking your advice and we'll be working on more self-care and starting trust intuition course tomorrow since other things were preventing me from doing so yes <laughs> i love that love it love it yes okay all right so if you can let me know let's do another um yes please i'd love a reading hannah oops so that's the card for whoever that is for. Trina says, yes, I'm petrified of all the crap I need to get through for that. She is scared little broken thing. Yeah, and that's why I recommend working with somebody like myself. Um, so my 30 day reality shifter is like one of the best programs. Like it used to be 21 days. 
on 21 Day Shifter, but I've made it better. It's a 30 day reality shifter, so you get 30 days unlimited one on one with me in WhatsApp, so unlimited voice message, unlimited text message. And if you think my live streams are healing, when you step into the energy healing vortex that is working with me, like having me in your pocket, you can text me any time of day or night and WhatsApp because it doesn't, I don't have notifications on. So I go in there with deep presence when I get to you during my day and deeply dive into whatever's going on and answer your questions or whatever's coming up. It's a very, very powerful space because it's not just like, oh, texting. Like it's literally like, you know, like this healing vortex. You're stepping into my energy field for 30 days. Plus with the 30 day reality shifter, and this is how I've made it better with than the 21 day shifter, is that there's two 45 minute phone calls with that as well. And we have the first 45 minute phone call and then our WhatsApp starts straight away after that call because we can shift so much on a call, right? And working with someone and that's the thing you know like a lot of people don't do in a child work because of that exact reason like there's a lot of crap from your childhood and there's a lot of stuff that you've buried and there's a lot of stuff that you know that you've buried and you don't even want to open that box because of well, fuck Hannah like you know what I mean trust me I know <laughs> so yeah 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 oh, thanks Katrina I feel touched about that so Kelly says Angelina doesn't get approval from her dad who literally always looks at the bad grades and gets mad at her and so the other way around. Yeah, it's intense, isn't it? Intense and big. Yes, yes, yes. Manifest, 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 manifest. <laughs> what was they saying? All right, cool. We've got a whole line of yes pleasers. Let me tune in to who that is because the card already fell out on the ground. Who okay, this is for. When I was shuffling, oh, I love this card. All right. Yes, lots of fear around inner child work for me, yes. And there's a process that we get to before inner child work, and that is self-care, taking care of yourself. And yeah, there's lots of things with that too. So, yeah. Yes, for sure, Katrina. Yes, yeah, nice to be on the other end. Okay, let me tune in. Let me see who this card is for. Okay. All right, so Katrina is actually who sounds like I went too far in my scrolling. All right, so Katrina. Katrina. So this is, I love this deck, the Dreams of Gaia Tarot deck. And this beautiful card here is oh i better get the book out because i don't know this deck off by heart but i know i have looked at these cards before just let me have a look here yes the dreams of gaia tarot by raven felaine i think is how you pronounce it so i think this is an earth card off of the top of my head okay Sometimes I can find them really easily and other times I can't. Oh my goodness, okay. Hang on, it's gonna be here. Here it is. <laughs> All right, I found it. <laughs> I found it. I'm not good with Roman numerals, so I'm just looking for the, I'm looking for the image. <laughs> okay, this one. Seven of Earth, it's the number seven, Roman numerals. Right, didn't learn stuff in school because didn't want to be there. But I did what I had to to pass with, with flying colours, by the way. Um, I got ducks of my school, non-TE ducks. Because <laughs> I wasn't going to do any study stuff that I didn't. I did cooking, sewing and mechanical and I passed with flying colours and got ducks of the school. So anyway, anyway, a little side note about me because, you know, I'm a high achiever. Anyway, <laughs> all right, seven of earth, meditation, grounding, connection, cycles, change, interaction, purification, and stress. Time to physically interact and connect. Get out into nature. Let Gaia heal you. Connection between self and the world. All is connected and has influence. Okay, so before I continue on, so again, so self-care has been a big thing on this um, live stream, right? So Richard was talking about it. Uh, we're just talking about it with Christina. Um, so the self-care and the connection is like 
the number one thing. So we're going to, okay, and this is what I wanted to address and say before, but I didn't. So that up and down feeling, you know how we're like up and down and the energies like are like this for the next six months that they're going to be like roller coaster, roller coaster. And the only way we straighten this roller coaster out is by self care. If we are dropping a day of self-care during the day at any given day, like like if we're not making it a priority, we're gonna be like, woof, woof, right? Like it's gonna be like this, yeah? If we make it a priority and make our connection to self the highest priority before we do anything for anyone else in the day, that means getting up at 4 a.m. before everyone wakes up in the house and that's what you do. And you go to bed at 8, 8 p.m., right? Like, oh, no, but I've got kids. Oh, well, you, you tell the kids that you're going to bed at 8 p.m. and you organize yourself so that by 5 p.m. you're doing all the stuff, which you probably do anyway, right? Like, there is ways, okay? Don't, don't tell me that it's impossible. No, because it is, okay? Like, you, you, there's always a way, okay? Now, I'm not talking about, like, oh, yeah, let's just do 10 minutes of meditation or let's just do 10 minutes of self-care or let's just do 10 minutes of, like, no, I'm talking, like, an hour or two, before you like what is the first thing you do when you wake up is it like scroll on facebook or on your phone like what is the first things you're doing like that's like the per pertinent like potent time to connect to spirit to yourself to everything um you know like especially at that time of day in the morning as well time of morning is is like the there's a thin in the in the air and it is a really awesome time to meditate but don't just think meditating for 10 minutes is going to be enough with these sort of roller coaster energies going on in the world right now okay um so i just got a text a day off. um and so like this like let gaia heal you and get out into nature now it is a proven fact it is a proven scientific fact that by spending two hours in nature every day with yourself hearing nature, feeling nature, resets your energy field, fixes your brain, it's, it's magic. Two hours minimum in nature. Now, that could be sitting outside in the sun for two hours. It could be walking for two hours. It could be walking to the shop instead of driving to the shop. It could be, I don't know, like whatever, right? And, and the reason that I'm bringing that up is because with this, for you, Katrina, it's like, um, you know, like this connection to self. Um, okay, so you got a three-year-old. Find a way. Exactly, right? And it, it's hard and it's tricky, right? It is really hard and it's tricky. But if you, like, find, if you can't do it first thing in the morning and because you, your three-year-old's awake with you, when they're having a nap, that's when you do it, right? Like, it, you know, and if they don't nap, well, then you just find a way you find a way right because it might not be that you have to like meditate you could be at the park for two hours every day right and it might be like oh i don't have time for that it's kind of like you make time for that because that is what's gonna fix you so to speak okay and this is the thing it's kind of like we're like okay i need to do all this deep inner healing and blah 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 blah, blah. and you know what we need to like focus on this first because if we're not focusing on this first and we go to like clear out the deeper stuff the deeper stuff it's not that it won't shift anything deeper healing is more permanent when we're like this when we're connected and we keep this connection right it's also more supportive if we were to like pull out a big old root like all the all the dirt and crap's going to fall in the hole as you pull it out right and so you're going to like collapse into self don't do that <laughs> focus on this yeah minimum two hours in nature like if that's the only thing you do for self-care like every day it's really what's going to like get you through okay so it's really strong. Um, address the stress, <laughs> meditate and still your mind, put down the tech toys, which is what I said around like, what's the first thing you do in first thing in the morning, okay? Um, time to physically interact and connect. So I'd be curious, like, are you like on your own, Katrina? It sounds like, um, you know, like, do you have much social interaction or have you isolated yourself? Because that does affect us as well, especially when we've got a three-year-old, even though it's like kind of the last thing we feel like doing as well. Um, so it says here, the seven of earth um, symbolizes a need to both nurture and maintain a connection between spirit, self, and the world around you. Ground, integrate, and connect. Um, to feel and embrace this connection does not require any belief in the divine, but a simple awareness that all is connected on an energetic level. At this time, look out into the world to see, feel, and understand the cycles of life and nature 
and how they affect and influence you. So again, when it says here, um, it does not require any belief in the divine. And that's why sitting, being, being in nature for two hours is powerful enough to reset our energy without doing anything else. So imagine if you did other things on top of that, right? So really, really important there. Um, so just going to see. Yeah, exactly. You do not have to believe. You just have to allow yourself to be still at peace and free of the impurities and worries that cloud your senses and good judgment. And sorry, the thing I really want to point out here um, is about, even though it says like, even if you do not believe, which I, I feel like you guys would believe in something, that's why you watch me and follow me or whatever. But the thing I really want to point out is all the the health stuff in the world, all the fear about the viruses and the 5G and all this sort of stuff. The thing, I, I, someone shared with me um, something the other day actually, maybe I should share it publicly, maybe I'll put it in the comments on this live stream, maybe I could do that right now. Um, it's very, very much like a big yes for me in understanding the whole virus thing and everything and even though I already knew and I didn't want to go into it in details, you guys know my views on all that stuff. The point is, the point is, is that a healthy, happy body, a healthy, happy mind, a healthy, happy soul doesn't fucking get sick, does it? Right? And so this as a priority supports our immune system. Like I said, two hours, it's scientifically proven, right? And if you can't get in nature, even though you need to like make that priority, Put earphones in and listen to nature sounds as well. You can hear the nature sounds <laughs> here. As well as the mainstream reality that we're here. <laughs> you hear all the birds. Can you guys hear them? They're really loud. Okay, I'm looking for something. Concentrate, Hannah, this one. All right. So yes, so that is a really strong message for you, Katrina. And it's so interesting. It's I know they're making themselves even louder. <laughs> How cool. Can you guys hear them? Oh, they're like literally flying over here to make sure that they're like... Oh, they're so funny. I love that so much. <laughs> it's awesome. I use Insight Timer app every day. Oh, I haven't heard of that. All right, so I'm just going to put this... Um, it's just a, somebody's post. Um, so Leanne shared that with me. Thank you very much. It was very interesting on the virus and stuff. And it's kind of like the basis of it is like saying, in a way, a healthy, happy body doesn't fucking get sick. For those in, you're in fear, just focus on getting healthy. I'm just like, don't get sick. Even if somebody tells you, the difference between someone who survives cancer or something is their mindset and their willingness to heal. Always. Or the influence of the reality of somebody saying, you're going to die in such and such time. And they're like, oh, and they believe that. And this is why I don't like fucking telling people's futures because our mind and our energy and our actions are the things that change and create it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's have another look at a reading. Okay. So I did already pull a card for somebody. And so I'm just going to tune in with who that is for. All right. So Fiona says, oh, I've kind of fallen in and isolating. I should go out tomorrow for two hours. Yeah, even just, you know, and that's the thing. Like we get in this like cocoon, you know, like we're like, oh, I don't want to go out. And then the times we really should go out. Just like, I don't want to go to the gym, but then we really should go to the gym. <laughs> like when we don't feel like it, they're the times we most need to do it. Yeah, that applies for anything, <laughs> especially the things we know that are good for us, like getting outside or, you know, like we kind of get isolated in the house and we're kind of like, it just gets comfort zone and then we don't want to go out the comfort zone and then we wonder why we get sick and depressed and we're not, we're not built for being indoors, right? We are not. <laughs> Okay, Kelly says, what about if I have my patio door completely open and hear the wind smell 
the trees, green bushes, is that the same as being outside? Well, yeah, well, I feel like if you feel like you're outside, like it's definitely better than being enclosed indoors, right? Even the fresh air and everything like that. However, there is, and this is all scientifically proven as well with all the studies. I'm sure you could Google about it. I don't know what you type into Google, but I've seen stuff in a long time ago and it's also relevant. Placing your bare feet, which I know is a bit hard for people in colder climates and what have you, but placing your bare feet on the earth resets your magnetic energy field, right? And so when we're indoors, even with the doors open and the breeze and the air and all that sort of thing, we are bombarded by everybody else's Wi-Fi, by our own Wi-Fi, by our own devices, like all the time. And then we're also indoors in walls, even though we love our houses and our comfy home and all that sort of thing. It's not a natural environment for the peak state of our human body that came from the earth that is of the earth like yes we've evolved and we're living in this reality and we can adjust and blah 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 but if you want optimum health it is like connecting with nature is the the, the fastest way to reset your energy and come back to pure health like it is like get outside like stop being inside so much you know like you know try six months of two hours outdoors minimum and tell me how you feel you know like because also when we're like oh yeah i'll do it like twice this week or we're like yeah i'll do it every day we do it twice and then we're like go back into our old patterns which is very easy to do right so shifting your patterns and your um, dynamics to do that and your reality and then also like with the you know like being outdoors it's like when we can commit to doing that over a long period of term period of time like it, it shifts everything right um <laughs> yeah if i were, if it was not 3am i would be outside <laughs> yes awesome bare feet on the earth yes i'm not a fan of the feel of grass and dirt on my feet yeah but there's literally like if you type it into google i don't know what you'd actually type but there's literally something that happens with the energy field of the earth and the natural like grass dirt sand whatever it is and our energy field of our skin and our energy like there's literally like it does something to us yeah yes back at the gym yes 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 all right and and you know and when you say that kelly you know but what if the just the doors are open and that sort of thing um you know like well that might be enough you know what i mean like um but if you're feeling low and you're going crazy and all the shit's going on in your life and you're like what's happening you know like um that um it's kind of like well how, when when was the last time i actually spent two hours outside for a long period of time yeah it's like fixes everything all right fear helps us bring fear helps bring us unhealthy even our beliefs yes exactly yeah been a great time to date healthy mindset healthy body yes human resonance we need to be outside to connect with the earth frequency yes thank you is that what it's called like it's a thing like it's it's a thing and we're not taught this stuff this is stuff we should be taught in school finally got to ground yourself awesome yeah exactly like and this is the thing guys if you're feeling off and you're up and down and you're like ah oh, like the first thing to check in is hang on a sec when was the last time i did something for myself um how's my sleep patterns um when was the last time i spent like you know a week outside for two hours at a time and if you're like uh then do that for a week to start with and then reassess everything right it's it's a thing okay all right so this card had already pulled before oh you've tried your first float that's so awesome love that yes wearing crystals help a lot they are really powerful they're super super powerful thanks lisa i was going to share about what's going on for me but um i'm talking energy update and talking cards so i'll do another live stream over the weekend and give you guys an update of how i am because yeah there's been lots of tears and stuff as well lots of release lots of light like look at this magic place that i'm in and yeah it's so much by definition it paranoia isn't my issue anxiety yes yeah, so anxiety i've done lots of live streams on that because there's so many different layers to anxiety as well um all right and i know who this card is for is is danielle still here swan psychic danielle if you can just let me know 
Um, so Katrina says, absolutely, well, this weekend is going to involve lots of nature. Awesome. <laughs> yes, exactly. Should be taught in school, I know. Um, okay, so I was saying something, the crystals and... Oh, the anxiety, yeah. So, you know, there's so many layers. Anxiety can be that you're feeling somebody else's energy and it's like... <laughs> Like, you know, it can be unhealed grief, it's a fear of the future, it can be something that you've eaten is tr can trigger anxiety, like there's so many different layers to it. I probably need to do an updated live stream about it as well, right? Okay, awesome, Danielle is here. Awesome for Reiki. Okay, so Candice, I see you're um, wanting a quick reading of health issues and depression. I highly recommend you rewatch this live stream because of what I've spoken on about it. We'll answer and help that question. Um, yeah, awesome. So Danielle, so this is the queen of water. Now there is a crab at the bottom there as well. And that's um, like, if we look at that, the cancer sign and it, are we in cancer? We must be in cancer, I think. I don't think it's June. I'm pretty sure it's now that we're in Cancer. Um, so let me just bring this up. The Queen of Water. <laughs> yes. Okay. So number one, Danielle. I did readings all day. <laughs> Drained. Yes. So when we do readings all day, it depletes our psychic energy and we must be recuperating our psychic energy as well as self-care. Yeah, so how do you recuperate your psychic energy as well as your physical self-care? Because you might be like, oh, but psychic energy like flows through me and I'm always connected. And, you know, like it, when I'm talking and channeling for whatever, it's like it'll, um, you know, it's flowing through me. It's not that it drains me. And it's like, but, you know, like the reality is, is that it does pull on our psychic etheric energy. It's a bit like when somebody does a healing um, you know, like the healing, like somebody gets a spiritual healing or something like that, it's very depleting on their aura and their energy because they're not used to it. And that can be more dangerous if they're doing too deep a work or whatever, right? Or too much at once, right? And this is why there's so many things to all of this and so many like steps and layers in a way. Um, and so that's the first, <laughs> that's the first, um, thing for you, right? Is like, how do you replenish your psychic energy as well as your other um, energy just your normal spiritual emotional mental physical yeah lisa's been through a lot as well yeah every emotion yeah it's been that i'm sure when you join the live stream lisa but if you i don't know if you watched the start or not but we did the energy update as well and it's very much that so pisces okay so Danielle says, I usually don't read that long, couldn't stop, and yes, now depleted. Okay, so another thing, boundaries. So do you go over time? Do you overgive, right? This is very pertinent on what we're talking about with this um, live stream in general around, you know, like with Christina being the mom and like giving to everyone else in the family and like when was the last time you did something for yourself and like, um, I haven't done for a long time, right? It's the same thing, right? And it all comes down to boundaries. Um, so like, you know, keeping your, your readings and the timings of it like on time, you know, don't go over time, right? And again, it's the over guilt, over giving us then like there's some sort of guilt in there because if I don't over give, if I don't keep going over time and give more then on some level there's a part of you that's like I won't be good enough or I won't be loved or I won't be accepted or blah 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 blah, blah right so queen of water um, is really I feel taking back your power and not um, not letting the drain like if you think of the water and not letting it drain or I say overflow but it's more about like not letting there be not holes but you know giving too much right um, so Yeah, yeah, so Candace is just saying, I'm a huge empath, I'm still reading you, Danielle. Um, I'm a huge empath, social situations can be exhausting even when I'm not trying to connect. Can't imagine how it is when you're doing it purposely, yeah. And it's a training, right? So whether you're an empath sensitive person, don't do this for work, do it for work. It's, it's a training of our energy, it's a training and a dropping in of our boundaries as well. Um, yeah, so many awesome questions, answers to your questions, yes, so good. Um, 
so and so Danielle says yes did not want to let people down yes okay and so that comes in from like not feeling good enough or like you know like they've booked in with you you know like you are good enough to start with but the thing is underneath is really a, around that little girl who feels like she needs to overgive because if I don't do good enough and well I need to give more because then that's not good enough like do you know what I mean like it is a thing right so, oh, look what it says here, what just jumped out at me in the book as I looked down. Are you overextending emotionally? <laughs> Which is exactly what I said. I'm like, the water's overflowing, not like overflowing from a full cup, but flowing out like too much. It's not contained, right? So when we're contained with our energy and the water flow, we're able to, um, like we're able to stay full and connected so, you know, we've got like a full bubble. So we were able to give without being drained, right? I heard that when you said it earlier. <laughs> exactly, right? Exactly. So let's see. Oh, it says be the embodiment of love, which again is like that energy around you. So when you are that, it's that's your connection that you're always full and that you're... I just want okay, this is so important, guys. If there's one takeaway you want to take from this live stream. It is this. Your connection connects others you do not need to over give to help people your connection and the energy that you are and that comes from you um being that connected it creates this bubble and this you know like thing around you this energy connection as you when you um are connected that heals people that connects people that changes people you don't need to do anything for them you could just sit in a room with them and they are healed and transformed and they feel better you know when there's people around you and they're like I feel better just being around you <laughs> right exactly that you do not need to do anything to heal them, pass messages. Of course, they've booked in for a reading and we're gonna be giving messages and blah, blah, blah. But do you know what I mean? This is a thing where our presence transforms people. We do not need to do anything but be connected. And when we can have that awareness within ourselves, when we are giving a reading, when we are listening to somebody, when we're doing whatever, that can also help you from overgiving like it can stop you from overgiving and you know like in just you remembering oh yeah that's right i don't need to I need to go over that boundary and the first time we start adhering to our own boundaries with this and this line of work for example um we will feel a lot of guilt we'll be like oh, oh i feel uncomfortable like it's a normal part of the process to having strong boundaries trust me i know i've been there <laughs> right um, but long term, you're going to have more energy and therefore you're going to be able to serve more people, which is ultimately what we want to do, right? So trust in your feelings and senses. Look beyond the surface, a bright and positive outcome. To show vulnerability is to show strength. Are you emotionally, are you overextending emotionally, which is the one that jumped out before? Um, be the embodiment of love. Uh, withdrawing love as punishment Use your common sense. Now, you could also look at overgiving as a way of like withdrawing love. And you might be like, what do you mean? It's like, well, when we overgive, then we're like stepping into control of like, I've got to help this person because I, I can, you know? Whereas, and that comes from almost a fearful place. Well, it is, right? When we're overgiving, it comes from a fearful place because we don't feel good enough. And so we're like, okay, I'm going to do this. But it's also like coming from control of like, okay, why well, help this person? I'm going to help control them and then they'll love me and then I'll feel good enough and I'll be fine right this big there's so many layers to that see how many layers are in that right it's really really big yeah so when we can really tap in to that level underneath of really having those boundaries in place we not only stop being drained right we have more energy but then we're able to shift our life and come from love which is what it said in here be the embodiment of love rather than from fear and control now you might be like i'm not controlling my clients i'm not i'm not doing that and if you really tap into it well you you are on some level right and control is like this little valve that like cuts everything off <sighs> energy draining money love the whole freaking thing right when we're coming from love we're in a wholly different vibration a wholly different vibration 
<laughs> literally like holy like jesus holy like whole vibration <laughs> does that make sense that just rolled out of my mouth that's big right oh covered in goosebumps covered in goosebumps <sighs> people they tell me they feel better just by sitting near me and then they tell me they their deeper secrets yes exactly that <laughs> it's exactly that right it's exactly that yes it's very interesting yeah and it's not like you know like oh you're bad because you're controlling your clients like it's not that it's it's just the little little girl inside of us that just doesn't want people to leave us because we just want to feel loved and validated that's all that's all all right i'm going to do one more reading but i'm actually going to do it for the collective and for everyone on this call that kind of didn't get a reading even though i know you guys have got messages from this space I can feel the energy as if I am actual an, an actual light. Yeah, good, because you are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you are. You're so welcome. All right. Oh, look at this. Look at this. I just pulled this card. It jumped out. The abundance card. And look at what I was saying before. Okay, this is t tailing, t tailoring off. Whatever. Off the card I just read for Danielle. Look up here. Um, see how like little this cornucopia tube is, right? And then it opens into this big abundant flow. It's like nice and big, right? I was just reading this card for a client the other day as well. I feel like the same message, so interesting. It's in the collective. When we are holding on out of fear and everything, it is like closing the valve. Oh, it's opposite. Okay, it's this side. We are closing the valve up here, right? And it, like I just said, then it closes everything, okay? When we allow this to open, we let all the abundance through and it pours onto us and all the light and the love and everything we're looking for is it opens, it opens a valve, right? How do we get into this state and out of the fearful state? Self-care, um, finding the joy like I was talking about on the live stream the other day, like um, all those things that take care of yourself, spending time in nature. Like honestly, guys, like if you're feeling off and you're anxious and whatever, like get get fuck outside man and just spend two hours out there i don't care if you just lie on the grass i don't care if you sit on a towel outside like or lean against a tree or like just sit in the park and read a book or scroll your phone for goodness sake like get outside and i guarantee you will start to feel better right and if you do meditations and actually grounding techniques and everything out there while you're outside as well like you'll just it will shift really fast right so so this is like confirming what i was just sharing before and as always it's always a, um, a message for everybody right so interesting that the bottom card of the deck is the sacred space and connect an altar create an altar or visit a power place to connect with the divine right your power place there was really interesting a few years ago like my auntie came over from the us and she's like come to this church and i'm like you know humoring her just going along and i'm like yeah and we just stood outside because i'm like man this is I, I can't i can't do it just it was just like an, in a um, retirement home and i was just like, like god bless all those souls but you know i was just like oh like the energy was just so heavy in there and i'm like oh we'll just go outside and a day was like four or something and i'm like okay i'm just gonna take her outside and then i was explaining to her day i was like why do we have to go there you know she was saying that and i was like well some people need to go to church to connect, whereas we connect by going out in nature. We connect by meditating, by doing yoga, by doing those things, right? So it doesn't matter how you connect. Maybe church is your thing, right? There's no right or wrong here. The thing is about connecting, right? Because that connection is what's going to open the valve to everything coming through the valve, right? Rather than saying, staying here and close and also stuck in the valve right we're stuck up there yeah whereas when we let go it flows <laughs> right <laughs> oh what's going on here who reported him <laughs> oh this guy is this who it is oh yeah i just gonna just gonna ban him ban it's so weird someone else did that the other day on my page i'm like as if people were gonna well people probably do I'm like, good luck building your business like that but anyway 
Um, okay, so let's just do things out of integrity and get banned off everything. And then what are you gonna do? Like talk about the valve being closed. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks for that, Danielle. All right, awesome guys. So that is the message. That is the, the super message. So if you're wanting to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, of course, there is the 30-day reality shifter. Um, there's unlimited psychic readings in there, by the way, guys. So you could ask me as many times as you like for a reading or a card on the WhatsApp support in there. Um, and obviously there's the two phone calls as well, which shifts so much on a phone call, right? It really taps in and just being in that vibration and just like, yeah, it really shifts it. So um, very, very powerful to do. All right. <laughs> yeah, what is with that? It's so weird that that's happening again. It's kind of interesting. Because I've never had that before. Obviously, I've stepped up on the world. <laughs> to be getting like people trying to steal things. I don't know. It's interesting. Whatever. Is oh, yes. So, if you want to work with me, one on one, obviously, 30 day reality shifter. Also, um, is the. Uh, six month mystic mastery so if you're really wanting to amplify things this is like a one-on-one -on -one immersion day so you get to spend an entire day with me together and this is where we really amplify your gifts via live in-person activations we shift out some of the deepest darkest stuff just by sitting in the space together you know that whole thing of like what it's like when somebody sits with you or they say like you heal me just by being like <laughs> next to you whatever it's exactly that so if you can imagine what that would be like sitting next to me because of i'm hannah and what i do let alone what i consciously do and unconsciously do with my clients working in the space and working on the field so the mystic mastery is six months of unlimited whatsapp support plus you get live distance healings um, as well as the life purpose activations, of course. And so this one-on-one -on -one immersion day is literally where we spend a day together doing whatever comes through intuitively. Of course, there's a little bit of a plan, but it's the intuitive plan that we follow for the one-on-one -on -one immersion day. So that is the Mystic Mastery Program. Um, so if you've got any questions about that, just send me a message. I'll put in the link in the comments as well for Mystic Mastery. Um, it's very limited places, of course, because of the level that I'm working with you at in Mystic Mastery. So if you've got any questions, send me a message about that. You're so welcome, guys. And I shall see you guys really soon. So lovely to connect with you. Remember, connect, 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 create your sacred altar and be outside to really shift and ground you in this crazy ass time of awakening that we are walking through and being the leaders that are here to guide the others through the chaos because we've already done it before. <laughs> Haven't we? <laughs> yeah. Hanging for years. I know you have the ability. Yes, yes. It'll happen one day, I'm sure. Okay. Lots of love to you guys.